course as well, and uh, continue on tomorrow. So I just wanted to start by um, crediting the real people who are responsible for this course, uh, John Woods and Dr. Tom Mark. How many of you have met Tom Mark? Okay, so you guys missed out on uh, Tom, uh, he's retired about a year or two ago, so I think he's expecting you to have taken his courses control part of the party. But you've heard, have you heard his reputation in the department? John Woods? Met him? Okay. What do they have in common? Apart from being faculty members here at MAC, they get really well respected. One thing in uh, particular is they've both written really well-respected textbooks. There's this one, I would imagine. And then Don, uh, Don Woods is one on troubleshooting we'll, we'll use in this course for the middle part of the course. And Don has actually written a number of other books that are published and I'll put the PDFs for those books online. This one I can't, this was a published book that is available in the library. So both of them have written and are both well-respected internationally. So you've got a real legacy here from John and Tom Marshall's course in terms of what they put together over the years. So this course has been since the 80s. Um, John Wood has been main instructor and Tom Marlin teaches most recently. And then in the last few years, Prashant Mashkar's been teaching it. Um, and then I'm taking it from the So I'll cover the same material as they've covered in the past. The notes that you are able to download and print or buy online are their notes. That none of the, the material is mine. Um, I'll be adding to it slowly over the years as I start to take on this course and make it within my own. But for now, we'll be using all their material. Um, now, a lot of you heard this this morning in 4 a.m., for those of you taking separations of lectures. So, uh, but there's a number of you that don't know me. Um, I certainly haven't seen a lot of your faces. I've seen some of you in my 3E and uh, 4C class. And so, just to you're all aware of what I uh, did my undergraduate at the University of Cape Town and finished that up in 1999. That was my bachelor's degree. Actually, Dr. Chris Schwartz was my instructor for process control back then in Cape Town. And then I was really interested in the process control area, so I started a master's with him in Cape Town in 2000. But right at the beginning of that, he told me he was leaving to come to Canada. So I had no choice. He was the only process control professor there at the university. So. Well, I could, have, I could have found another prop, I guess, or changed areas, but I decided, what the heck, let's, let's give Canada a try, and um, came here to do my master's without even looking at what MAC is about, and realized, holy shit, what good school is this? Like, we had really good instructors, Tom Marlin, John McGregor, and Dr. Schwartz, and, and we built up the faculty of the year, so I, um, well, I ended up staying, and I met my partner here, we got a house, and end up just kind of pretending to go back, but you don't. So, so here I am. I finished my master's degree then in 2002. I don't have a PhD, so I'm not a doctor. Just call me uh, Kevin, please. Um, since finishing my master's, then I worked with John McGregor in the, the chemistry department on a number of projects related to data analysis, statistics. So I worked with a number of companies in a consultant-type basis from the university. So the university has a research engineering position, which they work with companies and work with the graduate students to get their masters and PhDs to have really informative and interesting case studies. So that was my role over there, and then started a company with John McGregor. Uh, that company is still going. I've left that subsequently, and then uh, I've done a number of other things. But most recently, I've finished my new contract at the then the university hired me back in January this year and uh, started full time uh, in July. So that's where I am, assistant prof, now I'm at Mac, and I'm um, hoping to stay here. So we'll see how it goes. Now, if you want to speak to me, I'm available pretty much any time, but the most convenient times for you to drop in are Tuesday and Thursday afternoons in my office. Um, I'm not in JHE, there's no space in JHE anymore, so um, there's a room in the basement of the ESP where I am. Uh, the easiest way to get hold of me, though, is to email. That's the first choice. If you need to set a meeting, please email me. I can, I can accommodate you that way. Uh, you can call me on my cell. And if, uh, then the least preferable way of contacting me is by my university extension. I don't want to. Okay, so that's me.
me. Um, any questions? So I'd like the two TAs to introduce themselves. First up, Alicia, and then Yasser. So we have two amazing TAs. Really, really, I, 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 I'm very glad I got these two TAs. You'll see this course is really dependent on the TAs to make it a success. Uh, let's go ahead. <laughs> so I probably know a lot of you guys have been in my year who went for co-op. So I graduated from McMaster in 2011. Uh, I took that course two years ago with Dr. Masker. I think this year is going to be different. You guys have to think outside the box. So my office is located in GC369. I'm working with Dr. Chris Schwartz. So regarding the appointments, like, I think if you guys have any short questions, you can drop by any time. Uh, otherwise, you can send an email and then we can meet like that outside the office hours or during the office hours I'll be available. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the course and yeah, regarding my work experiences, it was probably internships over the summer with Bankto and, and OnStack. And yeah, so that's everything. Right. Right. Yeah, really good experience and you see with the project in this course, which is a big component, um, you're going to be drawing on the expertise of Alicia and Yasser and uh, some of my, my own expertise working with companies their experience with what, what, how companies operate um, is going to be really important in this course. That's so why I'm glad I got these two for, for this course. Now, office hours seem to be a thing that no one really uses. Um, so I want to get a sense of that. Do you prefer to have a fixed office hour or two every week? Or is it more email and arrange and, and keep it flexible with the TAs? So office hours preference, or is it email? So we want to establish all office hours. That's my sense for all the courses now. Um, office hours, if I do set them, never tend to be used. Um, so we'll, we'll just we'll keep it as email arrangements. Okay, that's very good. Okay, so uh, one other thing is I will try, where feasible, to video record the class there. So it's busy being recorded. This class. Uh, depending on if there's another class in this room ahead of time, I may not be able to set up a video camera in 10 minutes break. Uh, so we may not have that, but I will try to do it where possible. And certainly I will have the audio recording as easy for me to do. Um, you can use those videos and audio recordings as you wish. If you prefer to skip classes and then use the videos to make up on it, that's your choice. But this is actually one course where I don't recommend you that because the class sessions will sometimes be interactive with your group members. So I will actually ask you in the future when you come into the class and once you've selected your group members, which happens at the end of this week, that you tend to sit with your group members where possible because this will sometimes be discussion that's relevant to your, your group projects that you want to have during the class time. The other thing is when you come into the class to please move over to the one side to the far side over here, just because we've got the one main entrance and and if you're coming late, just to avoid people from coming through the front of the class. So, because the back is also not accessible for people who come late. So, please keep this side open for, for late comers and move in across in your groups where possible. Okay. Regarding the material and references for this course, uh, there is no official textbook as such, but there are a set of course notes that you can purchase. You don't have to, but if you want, this is the size of the course pack. So if you're willing to print this out on your parent's printer and not paying money for it, go for it. Uh, the PDFs are on the website, but it's a lot of paper, and not all of it is going to be used. There's at least one tab in here that's totally optional, but it's it's literally that much of it. The rest of it is going to be used. 
Um, so it's up to you to purchase it from that store in West Hale, from the factory uh, on the corner there, Sterling and Lange, next to the Peter Pitt. Um, it's pretty cheap, $37, considering that the number of pages, and this is double sided print. Uh, so it's totally up to you. They have, there's 90 of you registered for the class, I've asked them to print 45. After that, it's print on demand. So the first 45 people, if you arrive there this week, you can get your copy. After that, you may have to wait a few days um, if they don't have it there. Are, are they binding it? Or is it just no, it's intentionally it. left open. <coughs> and it's three, three ring hole punch left open because you will be adding notes to this. Um, I will be giving you extra notes that go as I go. Because this is, this is Tom Marlin and Don Woods' material. So this isn't mine. This is what I inherited. And we'll be using this mostly, but there will be times where I supplement it with extra slides. Uh, and you want to add the assignments and tutorials in, so it's intentionally left undone. If you wish, they, can, they have uh, a very quick binding system there, so you can buy the notes and they can bind it for you in no time. Okay. If you, if you want to. So if you don't have to, you can just uh, print out the PDFs as you, as you wish. Now, there's also a number of textbooks for the course. One is, of course, John Rupert's book that I showed you. There's about four or five engineering economics textbooks that I've been using to develop the material and, and learn from and, and, and prepare for the classes. Those are referenced on the course website. There's a number of textbooks on safety and troubleshooting and process operations. Those are topics that you'll cover. There is no textbook for 4N that covers everything. So there isn't any single one book that I can recommend, but um, all the books that I consider most important, I put on 24-hour reserve in, in both libraries. So they, sh they should be available for you to, to get access to for referencing, and just to browse. And then you can decide what you want to buy, what you want to download, what you want to spend your time on. Okay. So it's, it is, this is part of this course is that it's very, much self-directed learning. There's a lot of a lot of material, more than you can possibly ever get through in the time. Even if 4N was the only course you were taking this term, there's still too much material for you to go through. And that's part of uh, being an engineer is how to deal with this overwhelming volume of material that's there for you and be selective and find the material that works. Okay, so most of you have probably looked at the course website, and um, if you look something along these lines. So the top left of the, the, of the website is the administrative part of the course. Those announcements they will change regularly. My requirement for you is the following. Please check the website every day. There will not necessarily be a change or a new announcement in that top corner every day. But when it is made, it may be relevant for the very next day. So please check it every single day for something that might be new that's posted there, new slides for the next class, a new tutorial, a new assignment, or some update regarding the course project. That will all be posted there on the top left of the final page. On the top right, I will be posting the videos of the class, the audio of the class, the slides related to that class will go there. Um, they are already in this, in this booklet, of course, but just the subsection of the slides relevant to that particular topic, one, two, three, up to eight, will be posted over there. And then any additional um, material. So if there was something that maybe I, I screwed up on the board deriving something in the class, and I, that's happened many times in my classes, so what I'll do is I'll put a, a, a clearer derivation up there in the section. Say section three, if I messed up the derivation on net present value when we get to process economics, I'll put a, a revised derivation up there for you to take a look at. And I'll post an announcement for you to be aware of that. The bottom part of the website is related to the tutorials and assignments. They are not posted yet. The first tutorial will be posted by Friday, and we'll have that on Monday. The tutorial. The, um, Midterm will be put there after the midterm, the course project. There will be a lot more detail regarding the course project coming. And that's the critical part of this course, is the project. You'll see that in a minute. And details about the final exam. Now, I'll post some practice questions for you to, to work on over there. And then the bottom right is the calendar, which shows where you are going with this course. That's the timetable. 
questions about the website. Okay, so it's not an avenue website. Um, you, you will not find anything of interest on avenue for this course. I will never be posting any material over there. No announcements. I will not use the email system or discussion boards in Avenue. Um, none of that is going to be used for my side. If that is something that you, like, for example, I have, we were just talking about this in, in the separations course for end this morning. If something like the discussion board feature is useful to you um, and you've used it in other courses and you're missing out on that, let me know and I can activate it on Avenue. I have the Avenue access for this course. I just have chosen not to. But if it is something, if there's an aspect of that you feel like you're missing out on, let me know and I can certainly work it back in. And uh, the easiest way to, to tell me about these sort of things, like those missing discussion boards that you would like to see, or anything that related to the course, if you're not satisfied with how things are going, if you feel the classes are going too fast, if you feel I'm taking far too long to describe something that's really simple for you to understand. If near the end of the class you ran out of time and couldn't get your question in on a, on a particular topic, right away on your cell phone, or on your laptop, or wherever you are on campus, before the end of the day, message me through this website. So learnchd.mcmaster.ca is my site for all my courses here at the university. And all the work that I do at the university is on learnchd.mcmaster.ca. So, just quickly show you a bit about that. So at the top right now on Learn CHE, there's five tabs. The first one uh, is related to all the courses I'm teaching. So the very first one there is economics. That to me is the most important course I'm teaching this semester. That's a critical course for your development as engineers. It's the course I'm giving a lot of attention to. Um, about 60% of my time is going to 4M. Then 40% of my time is going to 4M. So those are the two courses I'm teaching. It's a, it's a very heavy load from my side. Um, I have about 170 students in, across those courses. Not all, there's obviously overlap between them. But it's a big number of emails and volume of, of students to deal with. The, I'm teaching 4C and 3K next term. Um, that's, so that's the course tab. The next one is, a, is uh, the information on how to get hold of me. The next tab is a bit more about myself. My teaching philosophy and so on is on the fourth tab. And then this fifth tab is where I want you to give me feedback. If things are not going well, as I said, or you want more information about the topic, I will take this up in the next class. It's totally anonymous. Well, you can fill out that, that box over there. Your choice to put your email address there is totally optional. Um, and one, when you're happy with what you've written there, you can send, and then I'll get an email with that, with that material. Okay, so that's the easiest way to get hold of me. Already since this morning's 4 a.m. class, I've had five different people message me about different things that they want to see. Okay, so this is definitely the best way to get in touch with me. It's something new that I'm trying, and we'll see how it works. Okay, let's get more to this course. The relationship between myself and you in this course is not instructor-student. The relationship that we're having in this course is manager and colleagues. This course is to prepare you for your professional development as an engineer when you finish up in the next year. So the way we're going to work with each other might be a little bit different to how you used to in the past. I'm not going to be here on the, in the front always talking to you and giving you lectures, though it will be like that for the first few weeks for the economics side. But then after that, it's going to very quickly develop into more of a professional relationship that you might have had with your manager, say, during a co-op okay, or any prior work experience. It's got a more professional relationship along those lines, rather than the, the instructor-student. It's more manager and colleague. So manager and colleague are usually, the difference between them in the hierarchy in terms of the corporate setting is not very much. When I was working in, in all the companies, first name basis with every manager. I've never called anyone by their last name. There's no Prof Gunn, no doctor, whatever. Even though my manager in the previous company had a doctorate, he was Francois. And we just drop into each other's office and we chat. So that's the relationship we're developing in this course. 
but there is still a professional respect for each other and from both sides. So I will respect all the material that you come to me with, questions, any issues you're having, and we'll treat it along those lines. And the same for the TAs. The TAs are also seen as my co-managers. They are more accessible than I am sometimes. So my first choice is that for certain things you go to the TA. More critical things like dysfunctional groups, members, etc. Those you can raise directly with me, but for more day-to-day -day material related to the class content, please email the TA and then CC me just so that I'm kept in the loop. That's the same that you would happen in a company. You send an email to your boss and CC the other relevant people. And then regarding email, it's not, I don't enforce it, but I do um, encourage you to use your McMaster email address when you send an email to me, just because I get all my email through coming through to Gmail and anything from a MacMaster.ca address gets flagged in red and goes right to the top of my priority list. Emails from Gmail and Hotmail, my friends, my mother, my father, they just appear as a normal email that was go lower down. So MacMaster, MacMaster.ca, bright red at the top of my filter. And I'll, I'll take care of this. Pretty much within a, in a day, and sometimes it may as the term that goes on, it may take a day or two, uh, but I generally try to get, uh, get back to you quite soon. Okay. Let's take a look at this course in the context of your career here at McMaster. So you're only your final year, right? This shouldn't be in confusing. And we're you're going to be ramping up with 4N and then 4W as as we're going through this final year. But we're we haven't just arrived there for you. Right? We've built up the curriculum in a very careful and thoughtful manner. If you look back at the McMaster course calendars for the past 20 years, and they're available on the university's website, the course codes and the course structure hasn't changed too much. We've always had a very solid base in science and math in your first, second, and sometimes going on into third year courses. So your stats courses, your math courses, these are courses that you take outside the chemical engineering department. These build your base. We build on that then in 2D and 2F with the, with the principles course, principles of chemical engineering or analysis and sometimes. So we're really getting to understand how chemical engineering processes work. This is the first time in 2D and 2F you start to see chemeng rather than just engineering. And we build on those two courses as a fundamental base by extending it through to your heat transfer course, your fluid dynamics course, 3M separations, 3D, your thermodynamics, 3K, reactor design, and then the process control course. These are fundamental science and chem-edge science courses that you, you need to work as an engineer and understand your theory. <coughs> we apply that theory in the labs to I, to the 3L, 4L, and in some, some of you may have taken bio labs as well. And that's, that's your implementation side. And then we have this other stream that's quite vague sometimes. People don't always understand the intention of it. It's the design sequence. So 2G, 3G, and 4N, and then N1, 4W. So this design sequence is here to teach you some of the other engineering skills you will need. Not every one of you is going to be a chemical engineer when you leave. I look back at my graduating year from the University of Cape Town. Maybe about half of us are actually chemical engineers. Others are working in finance, human resources, um, banking. They're working for energy companies, but not in an engineering capacity, more in a management capacity. And other people have just gone totally into more creative and arts-based areas. So not all of you will be chemical engineers. And many of you may decide after this is finished, you know what, I really wasn't all that interested in it all along. But what you will get out of ChemEng courses here at McMaster when you graduate is this ability, not just, the, so what I'm saying is if you don't become a ChemEng or a chemical engineer, those science courses on fluid dynamics, heat transfer, process control, they may not be too useful to you if you're not a chemical engineer. But what will be useful to all of you, regardless of whether you do chemical engineering or not, are the courses that come from with your, this design sequence, where you've learned about clear and professional communications in 2G, resumes and cover letters, some basic troubleshoot, uh, problem solving skills. In 
Green G with, uh, with, you took it with Tom Adams, I presume? No? So then you learn to be more about the flow sheet sync, how to set up and synthesize a flow sheet. Given a certain criteria of an end target you want to achieve, how do you develop that flow sheet and structure that, that flow sheet? And there's some material we had to learn there about physical property correlations. We used a lot of software tools to do this. But this is a far more creative and open-ended way of thinking. You're building on those science courses, reactor design, process control, fluid dynamics, heat transfer, and, and thermal dynamics, to really come up with some creative answer to a particular problem. We're going to take that further now in 4M. We're going to look at the economic context of things. So Tom Adams in 3G most recently did cover a very small amount of process economics. Like you learn how to cost out a flow sheet. But we're going to go look at that far more intensively. We're going to, um, I'll cover the topics under economics in a minute. So that's going to be our first five weeks or so. It's really looking at money and understanding the implications of that from a design perspective. Then the last weeks of the course, I will term operability. So it's a very open-ended um, word that's hard to pin down. Okay, so it's something like asking someone to define what love is. Okay, you can't come up with a definition. So operability is kind of one of those terms. It's something that we will learn a bit more about. So I'm not going to try to give in a definition now, but it covers the following topics. Most importantly, safety. We'll learn uh, for a week or two about some very important safety topics. We'll learn about the operating window of the process, the ability for a process to be flexible and reliable. And that, a lot of that brings in your process control material from 3P, which is why 3P is a very critical prerequisite for this course, is to understand that time varying behavior of chemical processes. That's going to be very critical in the second half of this course. And then you're going to take the skills you've learned from this course, particularly the group-based skills, and these tools that you've learned and, and use that in 4W, where you're going to be designing a process and, and taking a lot of the tools from 3G as well, but applying it to a larger scale. So, the in one slide, this is what I can see the course covering. You'll see a lot of these little characters with uh, speech bubbles. These are Dr. Marvin's uh, slides. So wherever you see one of this, this isn't mine. It's Tom Marvin, and people call him Marlon Men. So Marlon Men, Marlon Man here is saying, you're going to learn to look at flow sheets in a very different way. We've looked at them in second year and third year, but take a look at that flow sheet for a minute or two. What is that process there in the flow sheet? safety on the flow sheet. What can we do when things go wrong? 
Okay, so we'll have troubleshooting case studies where, where your time is 25 minutes and you have to solve that problem in 25 minutes. We'll get to that in the tutorials. But you'll have a number of opportunities to try out these troubleshooting skills. And I'm hoping to emphasize from this slide is that what you're seeing here is we're going to be bringing together all your science-based courses, all your understanding of vapor liquid equilibrium that you learned in chemistry, your understanding of reactor design, your understanding from process separations, process control, thermodynamics, heat transfer, and fluid dynamics. All of these courses are going to be very, very critical to succeed in this class. And if you get stuck with any of that material, you must go back and revise it. Go back to your notes from previous years and make sure you understand those material, that material. Because this course really is bringing all of that together. In order for you to succeed in this class, you must have a good grounding in all of those topics. So you're not going to ever look at a flow sheet in the same way again. When you're looking at a flow sheet going forward as an engineer after you graduate, you're going to see safety issues jump out of you. You're going to see inefficiencies in the process. You're going to see, well, there isn't instrumentation here to catch certain critical safety events that might occur. And you're going to look at that flow sheet and be able to troubleshoot issues when flow rates, temperatures, pressures, and other control loops are not behaving as expected. So it's not just a flow sheet with material moving around like you learnt in 2B and 2F, and where you've done your mass balance and energy balance. We're going to look at it far more in depth and from a process operation. That's, that's the key thing you're going to learn for F. So just a bit more detail on that. In the engineering economics time, um, that's about the first five weeks of the class, we're going to learn from Monday onwards about the time value of money, how it depreciates, uh, how, how it, it devalues over time due to inflation and other, and other reasons. We'll look at profitability analysis, so net present value, internal rates of return, DCFRR. These are terms that, for those of you that have done co-ops, you may have seen them uh, going around when companies are making decisions on whether to purchase new equipment, make retrofits, install, <coughs> they do a profitability analysis to decide whether we should be doing this or not. And that, that naturally leads into the third part over there on evaluating different alternatives. So how do companies decide whether to purchase machine A or machine B or do nothing? It might be more advantageous not to do anything than to purchase either of them. So we'll look at evaluating different alternatives. The topic that I'll be adding in over there is on depreciation. It's a topic that's, that sometimes causes a bit of trouble, uh, but it is important for engineers to understand what depreciation is and, and how, how it affects capital costing. Which is then the final topic with, where we say, give it a flow sheet, for example, something quite simple like that. Give me an estimate of what it would cost to purchase that equipment and have it installed and have it run. Okay, so there's, there's multiple components in terms of costing and there's a lot of databases that we can reference to come up with a very reasonable cost estimate. Um, so we'll learn about those approaches there. <coughs> that will take you about the first five weeks or so of the course. It takes us up to about Thanksgiving. Then there'll be a midterm on that material. And we'll continue on after that on the process operations or operability side of things. So, so the first five topics there on the process operations, those are all very strongly related to safety. How do we understand safety from an ethical point of view? That will be the first part that I look at. We'll then look at control systems that help enforce safety. Uh, we'll look at the topic of relief and containment. So exactly what it is, containing a dangerous uh, event or relieving it to the atmosphere or some other mechanism uh, to, pre to prevent an unsafe situation from occurring. We'll look at hazard and operability studies and then reliability estimation. So that's more of a statistical topic. Then the next important topic is for about a week we'll look at process troubleshooting. How do you systematically go about finding the problem in a process? And this is where I'm saying it could be in the order of 25 minutes that you need to get this done, or it could be you have a longer time frame. But we're going to look at a systematic approach so that you don't get flustered. I've seen it too many times when I've been working in companies, something's going wrong, <coughs> we've got to get production out the door tomorrow because our customers need that product. And everyone just 
jumps around like crazy and they're just <coughs> grabbing ideas from the air and not coming up with a systematic approach to finding the cause. So we're going to learn a reasonable approach to follow. There's multiple approaches that you could follow. We're going to learn one particular approach that works well. And you're going to have the chance to try that out in some tutorials. The uncertainty topic uh, is in the notes at section 7, I think it is. That's going to be omitted from the classes. That's there for your enrichment. Dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity, I may bring that into some one of the uh, tutorials, but in general I, I'm, I'm planning to, to leave it out just because of the time. And that's the way the course has been run for the past five, six years, is that topic hasn't really been covered. So but we'll, we'll see how it goes this year. Then finally, um, we'll look at this concept of operability, the operating window, and process flexibility. Now, throughout all of that, in parallel, there'll be multiple tutorials and assignments. There will be a tutorial every Monday, and there will be odd assignments. And parallel to those as well is the SDL project, so the self-directed learning project. This is the critical component of the course. So, let's yeah, just uh, step back for a minute. One thing that we want to get in this course is for you to learn that you're going to be responsible for your own learning. And okay, that's what the self-directed learning project is about. I'll talk a lot more about that tomorrow. It's not, the self-directed learning project is not an opportunity for me to sit back in my office and you guys do all the work. So the self-directed learning project is is a mechanism that, that was, that was a process that we're going to use and for you to learn how you can keep your skills up to date as engineers. So I'll talk about that much more tomorrow. The other one that we want, but another attitude we want you to, to learn from this course is that you have to realize that there's multiple things you need to achieve whenever you're working as an engineer. Safety, reliability, minimum cost, or maximum profit. Those are, those are, those are objectives you're aiming for. And there's trade-offs between them. Ethics is another one that we as well. We'll learn a lot of softer professional skills. I'll talk about that uh, I've got a few minutes at the end to, to show some of those. And then you'll be building up on your engineering science courses, as I said, already to, to extend that to, to your practical application. Okay. So this is the part where I, I don't know if I should do this or not. I, I feel like I'm your, your parent telling you these things, but um, Sometimes it's worth at least seeing it. When I was in fourth year, it was crazy. We had a course similar to 4M, a design and economics course, and it was a nightmare. This course had a reputation for the second year already. It had a very bad reputation. People had a lot of fear going into their final year. And you'll find you're in touch with There's so many competing demands on the time, not so much this semester, but especially next term. There's Kipling and all sorts of social events happen to, to help wrap up your time in that. Um, so time management is a key part of this course, of the, of the final year. But for this course in particular, one thing to be aware of is that class time and tutorial time is about 25% of the work that you're going to need to put in. You're going to have to put in multiple hours outside the class. That's just a suggestion. Um, some of you may get by with less, some of you might need a bit more than that. And I do recommend that you put your social life not on hold, but that you prioritize it. And that you choose your academic life over your social life for the next eight months. Not 100%, that's totally not required. You do need to have your social life, that's a very important part of your fourth year. But when it comes to choosing events, you may want to just have that in the back of your mind. And it's just for the, eight, for the next eight months, right? And not even. Uh, April will be even, you'll probably finish your exams before the end of April. So it will be really only for the next seven months to put it all together. You may have to work on weekends as well for this course, particularly for the group-based projects. It might be the only time that you and your group members have available to work on, on certain, certain parts of the course. I recommend that you keep up with any 
any exercise that you currently do. Um, at the very minimum, you try the following. If you're not doing any exercise, try to walk from home to campus if it's, if it's reasonable, or get off the bus a little early and then walk the rest of the way. Walk around campus. Campus is actually quite beautiful, especially over the coming fall. It's, a, it's really a nice campus and very walkable campus from that point of view. Join the Pulse if, you, if you're into that sort of thing. We're going to be doing a lot of group-based work. So actually one thing I recommend is you and your group go and do a group yoga class at the Pulse. <laughs> something along those lines. <laughs> right? Cardio class or something. Just to get get yourselves going a little bit. Why not? <laughs> the other important part about this course is I really recommend that you constantly communicate with your colleagues how things are going. Right? My partner and I have been together for 11 years and by God it's hard to communicate sometimes. Right? I sometimes say something, he sometimes says something and at the end we realize we haven't really understood each other. It's hard to communicate. If you're working with group members for four months, not even, so you don't even have that chance to build up your relationship with each other. But do this. Please communicate with each other. When you're missing classes, when you're unable to contribute, we're going to talk about that a lot more tomorrow. Um, the other one there, garbage in, garbage out. Yes, your body is a bioreactor. And if you put garbage in, it's garbage out. So look at feeding yourself properly and sleeping. Uh, don't try it all night, it's all the time. There will be this necessary, but um, it's not something that you should do regularly. Okay, now here's the other thing. We will get to the point where there are groups that are dysfunctional. So one thing, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but group work is not optional. Group work is mandatory. And if things are not going well, we need to come communicate with myself or the teammates. Please, please consider it. So, just, just a second, we've still got a few more minutes to go. I will let you take a look at this grading outline. Um, the one that's on the course website is incorrect. I've updated it this morning. Um, I will post the final PDF this afternoon. The grading has slightly changed. Um, I forgot uh, to add the midterm in when I was doing the original one. So uh, some of the way that the numbers have changed have changed a bit. And then we'll uh, use a fairly messy formula to convert your grades to um, two grade letters at the end. But, uh, sorry, fairly messy formula to get your grade percentage, but then we'll use the standard method to calculate the letters at the end. So take a look at that um, a bit more, and I can take it up next class. Regarding exams, um, my exams are always open notes, and you can bring any calculator, any book, or books in with you. Uh, just nothing electronic. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about tutorials tomorrow, but I just want to see uh, how many of you have signed up for Monday morning's tutorial? Okay, Monday afternoon. Okay, so it's about a 50 50 split. Tomorrow's class, we're going to be selecting group members. Okay, you will do that on a confidential piece of paper which you'll hand in, but you need to be aware of the following your group members must be in the same tutorial slot as you. So if you're in the morning, your group members must be in the morning as well. It's groups of 